Paul went there as well, in Greece. All these churches, from day one, from that teaching, was Eastern Orthodox Christians. After turn 54, you started getting Lutheranisms and all these other uh, individual Calvin that de decided to interpret the Bible they want. Then you get the Seventh-day Adventists, the Baptists and all that, and, they, and, they, and then you end up all these denominations. But rather than take the opportunity to defend the Christian faith, what does he do? <laughs> he spends his time here heckling a Christian <laughs> and attacking other Christians. It's kind of like religious nationalism. It is the idea that my church is better than your church, my community is better than your community, and it lacks any of the humility of a Christian. Rolling action. Okay, I uh, hope you guys are uh, enjoying yourself. It's nice to be back in the park. Nice, uh, brighter, sunnier day. So hopefully I won't freeze my fingers off like I did last time. Um, I want to talk, I, we, we, uh, we spoke in the past uh, repeatedly about the, the reality of, of how the scriptures present an image to us about what it is to be human. That as Christians that we're committed to a particular way of being human. And, uh, yeah, wait, 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 I'm gonna come on to it. You're just here at the introduction, Leon. So, which, which the, the scriptures present us with an image of how to be a human being. They give us a type of humanity, a type of way of being human. Oh, I've got a heckler already. That's not the topic today. Listen. What's the topic? What's the topic? We're gonna come to it, listen. Oh, okay. So, no, no, not all day, not all day. So in terms of our, in terms of our faith, when we, the way to read the scriptures, <coughs> the way to read the scriptures is to read it and to see what images are being presented. What images of being, what images of ontology are being presented in the scripture. And then to try to lead your life, to cultivate your life in such a way that your your humanity reflects that that way of being so that you become a kind of human and that human we believe is reflected in Christ so that we become Christ-like now one of these one of these attributes one of these characteristics of this way of being human is the fear of the Lord and that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the fear of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord gives every human many benefits. When we fear the Lord, our ontology changes for the better. When we fear the Lord, our sense of priorities change. When we fear the Lord, the things that we ascribe value to changes. When we fear the Lord, the things that we are able to do, the boundaries of the things that we are able to do expand because our fear often controls us. The things that we fear place a weight upon our mind, they place a weight upon our conscience, they place a weight upon our heart and they affect the way that we behave, they affect the things that we say, they affect the things that we do. Most of you can grasp what I'm saying when you think about the, the fear of losing your job. It influences your behavior. You try to arrive on time, you try to do a good job, you try to stay right with the right people. However, the fear of the Lord must be greater than all of these things. And these are some of its benefits. In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have a refuge. The thing about the fear of the Lord is that it grants us confidence. That's in Proverbs 14, 26. Because if you fear God more than you fear anything else, then what fear is there to give to other things? If you fear God more than man, what fear of man then do you have? How can the government or the law of the land or the disposition of your manager 
influence your behavior. If you fear the Lord more than human perception or how your peers view you or how society looks at you, but you fear the Lord, it gives you confidence, it gives you the ability to do things that may fly in the face of society. It gives you the confidence to be brave for the things of the Lord because you fear the Lord even if the things that God calls you to are things that would cause you distress or harm in terms of society, politics, economics, your social standing, your fame, your position. And if you fear the Lord and you have that confidence within you, then you will instill confidence within your children. Because your children will absorb your confidence. They will find refuge in you because you build your life on the things of God. In Proverbs 16.6 it says, By fear of the Lord a man avoids evil. Now I can honestly put my hand on my heart and say that I've sinned. I've sinned in the past. Not little sins, proper sins, big sins. But every, not yet. But every time, every time I've committed sin, I've noticed that my fear of the Lord has been diminished. My fear of the Lord has diminished and so I have felt freer to do those things that are evil in the sight of God. However, those times when I've walked to right, when I've walked straight in the Lord, when I've managed to hold myself as a man, as a Christian, it has been because I have feared the Lord. I have had a healthy reverence for the Lord and for the things of the Lord. In Proverbs 19.23 it states, The fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it rests satisfied. You see, if you fear the Lord, then that means that those things that are the priorities of God become your priorities. It's a simpler way of life. If you're not worried about what tomorrow holds because you fear the Lord only, if you're not worried about what people think of you because you fear the Lord only, then it allows you, your soul, to be satisfied. If we allow ourselves to fear the Lord, then our soul finds peace because we're not searching. We're not desiring something else. We're not pursuing another goal that is outside of our reach. That next level in our job, that next level in our career, that, that next experience. But out of fear of the Lord, we find satisfaction. We find that our life finds peace. We find that it leads to life because the things that God values are the things that are life-giving. It's things like hope, and faith and charity it's things like justice and prudence kindness and goodness it's things like self-control and self-discipline it is the cultivation of virtue and it is the practice of that virtue in your daily life and by these things we find that our life becomes richer it is filled with more meaning it has clearer direction. It has a focus. It has a point to it. It has a purpose. It is something that values the dignity of man, that values the dignity of being human, and thus it elevates life and it gives a life force. It gives and leads to life. Christ said, that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free Amen. so that you might have life and have it to the full because what is life life is not the things that you own it isn't the money that you possess life is those relationships that you build with one another life is that purpose that you commit your life to it is that meaning that you give to your life when you focus it on a goal. 
And if you fear the Lord, then you focus your goal on the Lord and that enriches your life because it enriches your relationships because you ascribe value to the things of the inner man, to the things of the soul rather than the outward things like whether you do wudu properly <laughs> or whether you wear the right clothes or whether you perform salat using the right motions but rather based upon the idea of enriching someone else's life by the hope that you give to them by the love that you build them up in by the faith that you instill in them if you fear the Lord you will ascribe value to the things that lead to life Proverbs 22 4 states the reward of humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor when we fear the Lord then it pulls us away from the sins that would make us fritter away our money and our wealth on the things that are of no value how many people spend 80 pounds on a t-shirt how many people spend hundreds of pounds just so they can have a house that's too big for them the fear of the Lord means that we see things in their proper perspective we see things by their proper value and we can become satisfied with a simpler way of living a simpler way of living that means that now we're not wasting our money on nothing and when we have that money hold in our bank account we're then able to do with those riches things that bless the poor things that help those that are struggling and when we in our humility lower ourselves to serve those who are less fortunate than us then we receive honor from God which is the only honor worth having and how many men esteem a man or a woman that dedicate their lives to the poor and the socially ostracized the fear of the Lord leads to riches and honor and life the fear of the Lord in Proverbs 31 30 charm is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised you see within the Christian economy of value within the Christian economy of value it is the things that are inside the soul that are of greater value than the things that are on the outside of the body Christ teaches this when he said that it is not the things that enter into the mouth that make a man unclean but the things that come out of the mouth for out of the heart of a man will pour the treasures of his heart Christ taught us that we should fear no man because man can only destroy the body but fear him who having destroyed the body can also destroy the soul and cast it into the lake of fire where the flames do not yield and where they lick you into eternity in the Christian economy it is the fear of the Lord humility that is to be praised and honored not charm not beauty not riches not vain glory but a humility that lives in service to God it says in Malachi 316 then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another the Lord heeded and heard them and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and thought on his name this is the Christian value the value of fearing the Lord this is our economy of value it says in scripture that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord our nation the United Kingdom has lost its fear of God and has gone away has gone astray and instead now every man is a Lord unto himself 
and our society is decaying for the want of a common purpose, for the want of a common culture. Our nation is dying because we don't value the family. We don't value the idea of human life. And so we destroy our children in the womb. We destroy our families through divorce. And we obsess about the shallow surface things, about our Friday nights and our Saturday night experiences, about how many experiences we can pack into our life because we believe that a life well lived is a life of diverse experience. But that's not true. A man that pursues simply experiences for its own sake will find at the end of his life he has done nothing of any significant meaning. He has achieved nothing of any great purpose. No, when you fix your eyes upon the fear of the Lord, it casts all other values into sharp relief. And by that sharp relief, we begin to see that which is important from that which is dross. We begin to see that which is wheat from that which is chaff. We begin to thresh the threshing floor and as we cast up the wheat, the, the chaff is cast away by the wind and all that remains is that of value. And so it is by fear of the Lord we ascertain that which is most important and we can build our lives upon it. Our Lord Jesus said that those who hear his words and build their life upon it are like a man who builds his house upon a rock. The storms come and the seas rise and batter against the house, but the house stands firm. Those who hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and do not build their lives upon it are like those who build their house upon the quickening sun. When the storms come and the waves rise up and bash against it, the house falls. Look at British society now. Look at the English people now. The English people now are a dying people. The German people are a dying people. The Italian people are a dying people. They are not having children. They have no future because they have not honored the ways of their fathers. They have not honored the traditions of the prophets and the apostles, and they have built their life on quickening sand. And now their very society is unraveling. Their very nation state is straying at the edges. Why? Because they built their life on quickening sand. But the church will survive. When the United Kingdom is a footnote in history, when the European Union is a footnote in history, when the United Nations is a footnote in history, the church will still stand. And why do I know this? Why, Bob? Why do I know this? Why, Bob? Because I know the history of the church. We were here when the Caesars of Rome were here, and the Caesars of Rome are no more. We were here when the barbarian kings invaded Europe, and the barbarian kings are no more. We were here when the Islamic Caliphates were established and the, is the, cali the Islamic Caliphates are no more. Nothing. We were here when Napoleon tried to establish an empire. Yeah. That empire is no more. Nothing. The church stands when all others fall. When the Caliphates fell, the church remained in the Middle East. The Islamic experiment failed. The Enlightenment 
of the 1700s is destined to fail, but the church will still stand. Come to Mother Church, build your lives upon its teaching and your lives will stand. Your lives will contribute to something that lives long after yourselves. All those that invested in the Roman Empire, their efforts are gone. All those that invested in the Islamic empires, their efforts are gone. All those who fought and died for the British Empire, their efforts are gone. The sun has set on the British Empire, it is no more. Those who fought and died for communism, their efforts were wasted. Communism is no more. But through it all, the church has stood undefeated. The church will be triumphant long after your socio-political experiments have all gone into the footnote of history and are nothing but the trash can of human civilization. The church stands when all others fall. Why? Because the church is the pillar of truth that is built upon the teachings of the prophets and the apostles with Christ as its cornerstone. The Lord remembers those who give their life to him and to his service. Commit yourself to the work of Mother Church, the heritage of Europe, the heritage of the Middle East, the heritage of China, the heritage of Africa. It is in the church that these cultures find their greatest and purest expression. It says in Luke 1, chapter 1, verse 50, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation, from generation to generation, through the history of the people of Israel who have survived countless attempts to destroy them, most recently by National Socialists. Through the history of the church, who has survived every attempt to destroy it, God has been merciful to those that fear him. History testifies to the truth of the church. History testifies to the failure of Islamic teaching. <laughs> History testifies to the failure of communist teaching. Yeah. History testifies to the failure of nationalism. History testifies to the failure of imperial Roman ambition. It testifies to the failure of monarchy. But it testifies to the success of the apostolic and prophetic teaching. And I invite you, all who can hear my voice, to pick up a Bible, to familiarize yourself with that truth that has seen the church and the Jewish nation aright over thousands of years when all of their adversaries have come and gone and build your life upon it. Build your life upon Christ, who is the cornerstone. Within the church, which is the pillar of truth, that is built upon the prophet and the apostolic teaching. I commend it to you. I commend my Lord Jesus Christ to you. And I call you to look again, because what you think you know about what it is to be a Christian is nothing but a lie. Learn the Christian faith from those who know the Christian faith, not through what the media or our enemies tell you. Any questions before I move on to my next topic? The church, I was just wondering like what any specific church you're referring to or what? I mean like Roman Catholic Church or which church? I mean there's many churches here, yeah, so 
The brother asks a question about which church? This is a question I've been asked many times, but I never tire of giving the same answer. <laughs> there is only one holy, catholic and apostolic church. It is made up of those who are disciples of Jesus Christ. They are not made up of people who celebrate Christmas for its own sake, or celebrate Easter for its own sake, or have a liturgy for its own sake, or don't have a liturgy for its own sake. A disciple of Jesus is one who seeks to view Jesus as his teacher, is one who seeks to conform his way of being human, to reflect that of Christ his Lord. This is the church, and it is one church. It is a holy church, it is a Catholic church, and it is an apostolic church. It is found in all of the denominations, whether they are Roman Catholic, whether they are Anglican, whether they are Baptist, whether they are Methodist, or whether they are Orthodox. Because all of those denominations have within them real disciples of Jesus, but they also have many people who simply attach themselves to the disciples of Jesus, and these we call cultural Christians. I hope that answers your question. The Eastern Orthodox Church is not a denomination. It was there from the year one. It was always proclaimed as Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. After 1054, when they anathemized the Roman Catholic Church, you had the Protestant churches protesting against the Roman Catholic Church, everyone interpreting the Bible the way they wished to do, and they all become all denominations around the world. Okay, I'll respond to that. The brother, sadly, like many sectarianists, is doing the devil's work <laughs> by dividing the body of Christ against itself. Ah. And he has done so with a poor sense of history. Okay. Because the reality is that in 1054, both churches excommunicated one another, both Holy Sees excommunicated one another in Constantinople and Rome. However, no one can look at the, the, the book of Acts and see their denomination in it. <laughs> because the fact of the matter is, the earliest church, the very first believers, evolved into the various denominations that we have today. And we could not speak of an orthodox church in the way that we do today until 1054. Ah. Because before 1054, yeah. the Sea of Rome and the Sea of Constantinople were in communion with one another. And God willing, they will be in communion with one another again. The church universal is greater than any denomination. Any other questions? I'm You've had. To respond to that. Later, let someone else ask it. So question. I'm not allowed to respond you to can that. Later. Yeah, yeah. One more question. Move my last one. Sorry. You mentioned earlier something about the church was here before the barbarian kings. Can you expand on that? Because I yeah. don't really understand what you mean. Because as far as my knowledge of history goes, there was what you'd probably define as barbarians were here long before Christianity arrived. So I okay, don't really so let understand. Me, let me address that. When I was talking about the Barbarian Kings, I was speaking about the 4th century, when the Western Roman Empire collapsed because it was invaded by Visigoths, Goths, Huns, um, Vandals, Jutes, Saxons, Angles. Does any of these names sound familiar? Do you know why they sound familiar? Because they're our ancestors. They are my ethnos. I'm an Anglo-Saxon. That means that I'm talking about my own people as barbarians. We invaded and destroyed the Roman Empire in what was later termed as the Dark, as the dark Ages because of the collapse of the Roman Empire. That was what I was referring to. The church was here before them and the church Christianized them and their kingdoms are long since gone, but the church is still here. Now you can come back. So, may I, to get to what you're saying, we need to just have a small dialogue if we may. So, the first Christian island where Paul went, where the church still exists today, has never been corrupted and never changed any of its teachings. So, do you know which, which island is that? 
Well, if, we, if you don't mind, very quick dialogue. What, what, which, sorry. So what is the very first Christian island that become a Christian country the first where Paul country went to? Armenia. No, it was Cyprus. Is Armenia. You're well, well, it's on the record. The Christian king was Armenia. Okay, so, so Cyprus is part of the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire didn't become Christian until uh, until after Constantine. So your history is just wrong. Okay, so, 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 this is where we disagree. The first Christian island, I'm saying, island, was Cyprus, where Paul went and he spoke to the to the people who are not in Cyprus. Please let me point. So the church there. And also in Greece, in Corinth, where Paul went there as well, in Greece, all these churches from day one, from that teaching, was Eastern Orthodox Christians. The churches have never changed, never been corrupted, never changed any theology or anything. They've always existed from day one there. You can't deny that. And the people who are listening to this video can go and check the history and see. So from there, 1054, something happened. But while there was 1054, there's five popes. Uh, all first amongst equals, meaning each pope was uh, equal with each other. There was not one had an authority over the other. So up to 1054, you had five popes around the provinces of the known world then. In Greece, Egypt, Cyprus, uh, Greece and Rome. But the Roman, please don't be rude, but the Roman church, the pope decided to uh, be to, to overtake and to control all the other popes. He changed certain things of the orthodox teaching, which was the original teaching, which still exists today. And because of that, it was the Eastern Orthodox Church that anathemized and got rid of the Roman, separated from the Roman Catholic Church. You can't turn around and tell me I don't know the history because anyone who's listened to this video can go and check that history. And it's from day one up to now, the teaching's always been Eastern Orthodox uh, Christianity. After 1054, you started getting Lutherisms and all these other uh, individual Calvin that de decided to interpret the Bible they want. Then you get the Seventh day Adventists, the Baptists, and all that, and, they, and, they, and then you end up Allow all these denominations. Reply. Allow me to reply. The brother's history is simply wrong. <laughs> he uses terms anachronistically. He says that the church in Cyprus was founded as the Eastern Orthodox Church. The reality is there was no such thing at the time of Paul called the Eastern Orthodox Church. That very term only makes sense after 1054. Now I'm not denying that there were historical developments in all churches, in all denominations. That's true. The very development of the canon of the Bible is a demonstration of that. Paul didn't use the New Testament. But if you look at the teachings of the Eastern Orthodox Church, they do use a New Testament. Ah. The fact of the matter is that if we truly claim to be Christian, then we must take seriously the words of the Apostles. So let me read some to you. Because it seems to me that your heart is more twisted by the devil to hate your Latin brothers than you are to embrace them and defend the gospel against those who are opponents of the church and you make yourself an enemy of the kingdom of God by doing so. Now I exhort you, brethren, that's you, all right. by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree and that there is no divisions amongst you but you, you be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment. For I have been informed concerning you, my brethren, by Chloe's people, that there are quarrels amongst you. Now I mean this, that each one of you is saying, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Has Christ been divided? Paul has not crucified for you, was he? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one would say that you were baptized in my name. Now, what is the Apostle Paul saying here? Bearing in mind that he's saying in the first century Christians were divided amongst themselves. So division is nothing new. But the teaching of the Apostle condemns both the Pope and the Patriarch of 1054 because they were both 
full of their own pride, just like this brother is full of nationalistic pride. His love of the Orthodox Church doesn't come from a love of Jesus, it comes from a love of being Greek. His hatred of his Latin brothers has more to do with his sense of national cultural pride than it does with a real commitment to the teachings of Jesus Christ and the Apostles. The devil is your teacher, not Paul. May I respond? Thank you. So instead of focusing on my own character, why don't we focus on the historicity? You said that the, the term Eastern Orthodox Church is a term that came after. But listen, the word Trinity is a word that came after. It doesn't mean the Trinity didn't exist in the Bible. The Eastern Orthodox Church is the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Okay? Okay? And Paul was talking to the people who were twisting the truth. He was part of the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, just like the Eastern Orthodox Church is the Holy Catholic. Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Aye. The people that you go by a new thing called Sola Scriptura. You only go by what's written. Sola Scripturist. Please, one minute. Well, <laughs> m- most all the Protestants believe in. I'm not a Protestant. <laughs> what are you? I'm a Christian. What's that? What's a, what? What? A Christian is a follower. Yeah, but the way, wait, wait, wait. Are you a follower of Jesus? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes, I am. But can I finish? Seek to be his disciple. One minute. Let me finish my point, or and then you seek to be Jesus' disciple. Let me finish my point, and then we go. I'll let you finish. I didn't interrupt you. Yeah. So. The Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, which is the Eastern Orthodox Church, has always existed from day one. The countries where Paul went, in Cyprus and in Greece, those churches still exist today, okay? Never changed, even over the birth where Jesus was born, and in Bethlehem, and where Jesus was crucified, is the Eastern Orthodox Church, the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. The people that compiled and what decided which books go into the New Testament and the Old Testament were Eastern Orthodox, Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. They are the people that put the Bible together, decided what goes into the Bible and how you interpret the Bible. Okay? Well, then then it's good for the... your history again. Let him him just change the back. It's good for the listeners to check this history and you can go and 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 answering all this debate. One second, sir. And just, just to to get the viewers of this camera to to back up on this, they can look at, listen to Ancient Faith Radio on the App Store, on the iPhone App Store, and they can listen there and they will see the truth, what's going on. Wait, 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 Barry Change, Barry Change. If you two follow the same scriptures, What's the division? That's the point. Okay. Right. So the brother said. What did he say? The brother said that the Eastern Orthodox Church was the original church. I am not denying the fact that the Holy See of Alexandria, the Holy See of Antioch, the Holy See of Rome, the Holy See of Jerusalem, and the Holy See of Constantinople are apostolic sees. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that the Orthodox Church can claim historicity. I am simply pointing out it is not the only church that can claim historicity. The church in Rome can claim historicity, a point that he ignored, which is that, don't interrupt, a point that he ignored, because after the fourth century, when the Western Roman Empire fell, the church in Rome at that point started to go its own way because it was not united in law, society, economics or in in political power to Constantinople and so it started to develop differently but it was apostolic and it was in communion with Constantinople something he doesn't seem to be aware of Secondly, it was the Eastern Orthodox Church who became suspicious of the book of the Apocalypse because of the heresy of the Montanists. And the Eastern Orthodox Church would have rejected the book of the Apocalypse had it not been for the testimony and the evidence of the Latin Church, but he didn't know that because he doesn't know his history. You see, the Eastern Orthodox Church 
accepted the book of Hebrews, but the Western Church did not. The Western Church accepted the book of the Apocalypse, but the Eastern Church did not. And the two churches cross-fertilized one another. So the idea that the Eastern Orthodox Church has never changed anything is historically inaccurate. Because at the time of John Christosom, an Eastern Greek father, the canon of scripture was 22 books in the New Testament. That changed, but he's not listening because he doesn't want to listen. You okay. say you're a disciple of Jesus. Yeah, you, say that. you said that. Yeah. A disciple of Jesus. Okay. Yes, a disciple of Jesus. I don't deny that you can be a disciple through Eastern Orthodoxy. I simply deny that you can only be a disciple through Eastern Orthodoxy. Okay. May I respond? Thank you. So now you're twisting it or you're changing it because now you're saying, oh, you can go through Eastern Orthodoxy to be a disciple of Jesus. You, you did say, that. but then you, you said that I am possessed by the devil and that I am <laughs> trying not. to, please allow me to finish, and that I am trying to segregate and change things. Yes, I am, you and you also said that I ignored the Roman Catholic Church. I didn't. I told you after 10, before 1054, the Eastern Orthodox, Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church was one church with five popes in the five different provinces. And there were first amongst equals. All right. But then, so that means that the, each pope was equal with each other when they made decisions and to control their areas. But in 1054, the Roman Catholic Church wanted to be above all the other, other popes and he decides that he's infallible, that he can't make any mistakes and to be in charge of all the other provinces. That was number one. They also in introduced the Philoque, which is a new doctrine. That was never the teaching of the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. They introduced indulgences where you can pay money to be saved. And there's a, a string of other medieval, things. Yeah, medieval. and then and then you had you had so many things that the, the Roman Catholic Church started to introduce, and that's when the Eastern Orthodox, the Roman, the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church anathemized the Roman Catholics, separate from them. Then what happened? Okay, you have all the Protestants, the people trying to trying to interpret the Bible. They wanted to, the way to interpret it by using Sola Scriptura, which was another new thing that, you, that people started to introduce away from the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church and this is what caused problems and that's where you get thousands of denominations around the world so all I'm saying is they should have come back home you threw the baby out with the bath bath water the, 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 you should, at 1054 you should have come back home to the original church which still exists today okay Rome had primacy and that is my answer to that I don't go to personally attack you or to, to give you on that the reason why this brother is doing the devil's work <laughs> rather than God's work Why, Bob? is because there are enemies of the gospel all around us. Ah. There are enemies of the church all around us. But rather than take the opportunity to defend the Christian faith, what does he do? <laughs> he spends his time here heckling a Christian <laughs> and attacking other Christians wow. whilst the enemies of the gospel do the same. Sorry, he's not so when, when, when the enemies of the kingdom of God attack the Christian community and then the Christians side with them in doing the same, what other conclusion should we draw? Now let's just go to the Gospel of John because this brother says that he's a disciple of Jesus. Yeah, he, said that. he says that he wants to follow Jesus. Yeah, he said but we've encountered one another before, if you remember. And you didn't sound like one then. Maybe something's changed. Okay. Maybe you've yeah, repented. Okay. So, let us come to the high priestly prayer of Jesus. Ah, right. Come, Bob. <laughs> Bear with me one second, please. Ah, right. What, Jesus what you, High Priestly Prayer. Say something on there? Okay, so, I am not attacking you personally. I love every human being. I love you and I love every human being, whether he's Muslim, Buddhist or whatever. What I don't like 
is when, thank God there's cameras here, because when you, you and, and what you say, I agree with 99% of everything you say, I love what you're talking about, but you're the one that attacked and you dismiss the Eastern Orthodox, Holy Catholic no, and I Apostolic didn't. Church. Yeah. It's on camera, it's one minute, on the camera, you dismiss That's something. May, may I finish what I want to you're say? Not, may, I fin may I finish what I want to say then? Okay, may I finish what I say? Let's assume, okay, let, let, two, two, one, 30 30 seconds. Maybe 30 no, seconds. what I've got on to. Right, so the brother tells a lie about me because he wasn't listening. I said that there is one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church and that one holy catholic and apostolic church can be found in every christian denomination and in that list i specifically mentioned the orthodox church i did not dismiss my brothers and sisters in the orthodox church i did not discount them i did not cast them out i did not anathematize them but this satan's disciple <laughs> has stood here and attacked his brother Christians because he is filled with hubris, ah, a denominational pride. Ah, okay. It's kind of like religious nationalism. <laughs> it is the idea that my church is better than your church, ah. my community is better than your community, and it lacks any of the humility of a Christian. Ah. And it does not reflect the desires of the one he calls his Lord. Because our Lord said, okay, Bob. He said this. It's a long passage. Um, Bob. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son. Do you think that this kind of behavior glorifies Jesus? Uh. That the Son may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh. That to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life. That they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Try preaching that rather than denominationalism. <laughs> I glorified you. How can you hope to win your argument by seeing the work which you have given to me to do? Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Do you not care about the words of your Lord? I have manifested your name to men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words which you gave me, I have given to them, and they received them and truly understood that I came forth from you, and they believe that you sent me. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on, on be, of behalf of the world, but of those whom you have given me. Christ is establishing this prayer for his church. He says, Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they may be one. One! Not this denomination. Not that denomination. Show me the word denomination or even a description of a thing called a denomination. Show me anything that hints at the idea of denominations. Christ said, let them be one, Holy Father, so that the whole world might know that you have sent me. That is why you're doing the devil's work. Because by dividing the church, you cause a scandal to all those that could hear the gospel. You waste your own energies. Repent of this attitude. Repent of your denominationalist pride. And accept all those who are disciples of Christ in whatever denomination they are found as disciples of Christ. I said my last point, so we're not up my arguing and moaning like so. I said to you that at the beginning you appeared to me and if I'm mistaken I said okay wait a minute. I'm not talking I want to talk from a place of humility and love okay and 
if I was mistaken to feel or to think that you was taking Eastern Orthodox, Orthodox Church, the holy one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, I apologise to you and the viewers. Okay, one minute before we do that. No, before that, one minute, one minute. So, all I'm saying is, I if that was the case, and we can see it in the beginning of this video, then I sincerely apologise because I'm. Um, with humility, I'm not the devil, I'm not evil, and I haven't got any ill intentions. I, I just wanted to correct you on some historical issues, and I think it's very important because at the time we had uh, the councils, there was a lot of uh, false doctrines creeping in, so we had to have the councils to protect the teachings of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And when you mentioned Paul earlier, and when you mentioned we must all be united one if you follow through the scripture it says as one holy catholic and apostolic church it use it well uh, well now i'm t well this the is creed. Yeah. in the creed i'm talking about the creed, yeah, the creed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. this guy is a roman catholic church i don't hate him i love this guy all right and he corrects me i learn from him he learns from me Do you i have humility yes so you accept he's a christian yes so do you, you accept, accept that i'm a christian yes Right, so Christ. so Christian, you've proven my point. Thank you. No, no, so no. Christians, so the so if he is a Christian and I am a Christian, are we part of the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church? Uh, well, this is this is a bit difficult here because this is where we can disagree, yeah. No, but it doesn't mean I hate you or I don't think your work is no good. No, 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 no. Because there is one Holy Catholic and Apostolic. Catholic is he a part of it? No. You know, no I, I suppose this is where do you think that Rome is outside of the fold of the Apostolic Church? Well, no, they've got apostolic succession coming down. That's what I said. But so is the Eastern Orthodox Church got a holy apostolic. Okay, well, but please let me, my, what is my point? My point is that there are things though, which was changed over history. Whereas, that, please let me finish. Come to the matter. Please, Come to the matter. No, no, you're not, let me You accept that he's a Christian. You accept that I'm a Christian. You accept that Christians are part of the church, correct? Uh, not the Eastern Orthodox Church. No, hold on one second. No, no, no. The church is the body of believers. It's the people, right? Yeah. You know that. Uh, well, yeah, but you have to follow. No, no, hold on. Okay, finish your point. When you finish, then, I'll, then, then let me then let wait, me speak. So, my question to you is: Paul teaches in his writings that the church is the bride of Christ. Yep. The church is described in multiple forms in Scripture. There's many images. Bride of Christ is one of them. Holy temple is another. Royal priesthood and holy nation are other images. But one of the images is the image of Christ's body. Yep. That, that believers form the body of Christ. Yep. You're aware of that. It's in 2 Corinthians. You know that, right? Yep. Is he part of that body? Yes. Am I part of that body? Yes. Are you part of that body? Yes. Which of the three of us is in the Eastern Orthodox Church? No. Which you're not. Three of us are you're in not. You're Only I am. To the question. Oh, he's, he's. Yeah, you yeah, are yeah. right, but we are part of the body of Christ, right? Okay. Look, <laughs> you can hit me questions, yeah. <laughs> now listen. So, do you partake in the in the sacraments of the church? I believe in the sacraments of the church. So, do you take the bread and the wine the, as the body and the blood of Christ? I believe in the real presence. Do you take? Answer the question, please. Oh. Do you take the bread? I've just have. Is it take, well, I'm sorry, I'm a bit slow. Let's assume I'm slow. So, do you take the bread I and believe in the real the presence? Do you take the bread? I believe in the real presence of the body of Christ in the sacraments. I'm so not say, sure. Do you take the bread as the body of it Christ? means that I believe in Holy Communion and I believe in the real presence of Christ in the sacrament. Okay, body, we this, say this, amen. this so, once, so, sorry, once, this gentleman is Roman Catholic, right? Never. No, now this guy <laughs> takes Holy Communion, yeah. but what he takes... We share he, he Apostolic takes, Communion, wait a minute. this is no, what no, makes no, us no, no, part no, of the same... There's slight, there is differences that has changed, that's what I'm a point. Deal with my point. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, let me finish, please, I'll let you finish. So they take the wafer, they take a wafer as the, bre as the body of Christ. Before it was the bread. Like leavened and unleavened bread. That's, yeah, le yeah. Is that really yeah. important? See, so yeah. what I'm saying is, this is this, you've, de you've demonstrated, so you because you're not finishing, you're just babbling. You're just babbling. Try to, well, finish your point then. Finish your point. What I'm trying to say is, you, first of all, it's very important. Roman Catholic and Holy Catholic is two different things. Catholic means universal. Roman Catholics. Never would have thought that. Why? 
bro, you can't so you, are, you, are, you, are you being sarcastic yeah, to me now? Yeah. Is that is that yeah. is that coming because, from the devil because, then? Because is that coming because, from the devil? Listen, listen. Because this this demonstrates <laughs> the level. This demonstrates the level of your poor discipleship. That you actually think that what is really important is whether we use leavened bread yeah. or unleavened bread in the communion. You actually think that that is the thing that decides whether the sacrament is valid. No, 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 I'm making a point. The point that I invited you to address, George, is this. You have said that he is in the body of Christ. You have said that I am in the body of Christ. And just for the record, if you are truly a disciple of Jesus, I believe you are in the body of Christ. But that means by implication that the body of Christ is bigger than our denominations. Because he's a Roman Catholic and you're Eastern Orthodox and I don't subscribe to any denomination at all. Okay, may I respond? To that point, please. As, an e as a Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, yeah, we don't know exactly how God is going to judge us. And yes, you try and follow Christ. I try and follow Christ. He tries to follow Christ. And some Protestants over there try and follow Christ. But my point is that there are different interpretations of the Bible that you have and I have. If I was to say to you, okay, that if I was to say to you that how old was Mary when she had Christ? How old was Jane, uh, Joseph when he had Christ? when he married Mary was Joseph married before what was her name and what happened to her and was the brothers and sisters of Jesus were they his biological brothers and sisters or were they or were they children of Joseph these, these please let me finish I'll never interrupt you these little things are very important like these are very important little things where when we have a problem we have to go and find what is the right interpretation of the Bible Right now, you go by your your denomination or your belief. This person will go from their way. This person will go from. Their way. So where do we go? You have to go from the original people who interpret the Bible, who who, who, won, they, who decided to put the who Bible together. Those are the people we need to go to George, to do. Thank you, George. Right. Thank you, George. George. Let, let's be clear. Let's be clear. George has once again demonstrated. George has once again demonstrated that he is a child Christian. That he is a Christian that has been poorly discipled. Because he actually thinks that whether you believe or not that Joseph was married before he was uh, uh, betrothed to Mary affects your salvation. He actually suggested. No. You didn't they say that, fine. No, example, no. But it was a crap example, <laughs> George. It was a crap I example. It's a crap, no. It's a crap example, George. Because you're ignorant <laughs> too much of your own religion. You're ignorant too much of your own religion. Please, sir. This is what matters. No. This is what matters okay, let me say about this. whether you're saved or not. Okay, man. The story is this can be found in the Gospel of Mark and in the Gospel of Matthew. Christ asked his apostles, whom do the people say that I am? And the apostles replied, some that say that you are John the Baptist returned from the dead. Some that say that you're uh, one of the prophets returned. Some say that you're the prophet Elijah. Then Christ asked his apostles, but whom do you say that I am? Yeah. And Peter replied, you are the Christ the Son of the Living God. And Christ replied, Blessed are you, Simon Borjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And you are Petras, and upon this rock I shall build my church and give to it the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and the gates of hell shall never overpower it. It is your belief in the identity of Jesus that decides whether you are saved or not, whether you are a disciple or not. And George, <laughs> for the want of your ability to listen, I will repeat my point again, and I will ask you to address my point again. Right. 
disciples of Jesus are described by the Apostle Paul as being the body of Christ. He is a disciple of Christ. I am a disciple of Christ. You are a disciple of Christ. Chris is a disciple of Christ. K is a disciple of Christ. JC is a disciple of Christ. They are not all part of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Therefore, my point is that the body of Christ is bigger than the denomination you're claiming. Where is the fault in my logic unless you're willing to argue that he is not a disciple of Christ and neither am I? I did answer you and I'll answer you again, okay, with that personal attacks, okay, and that is that we are all disciples. If we go to a physics classroom, we're all disciples, but this gentleman might read something and interpret it differently and this person might interpret it differently you're still disciples you're still trying to learn about physics but what is the true teaching of physics that is my point in the bible in the bible well wait a minute 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 so you're agreeing one minute one minute the uh please please um in the bible it says there are many more things said than done which the whole world wouldn't fill the books right so what were those things how could we know about those things so what i'm saying is that it doesn't mean you have to really look at the source the new testament was in greek the eastern orthodox church is the, the it sprang from greeks the old testament the do, one minute one minute, one minute the, old testament. The, the, the eastern orthodox church sprang through palestinian jews yes not through yes. greeks yes <laughs> and it sprang up in, in, in please wrong. all greek speaking in turkey today Everyone it was all greek speaking, greek speaking <laughs> in those days exactly exactly you're That's telling alexander me. the great <laughs> not because of the eastern orthodox church Look, you keep interrupting me. If you let me finish, if you don't want to, it's okay. We don't have to have a, we can end the conversation. But you look at all of Greece. All these Greek speaking, there were 72 Greek speaking Jews that interpreted the Old Testament into the Septuagint, so into that Greek. Why am I on a, well, let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. So these churches in Cyprus and in Greece, all and these, Rome, all these holy and in Carthage, yeah, yeah, but wait and in Hippo, and in Alexandria, right, and let me finish. in Antioch. What this is, is the technique, point? won't you let me finish. So what I'm saying, you're telling me these churches, the Greek speaking people there, they got it all misinterpreted it wrong. Because there's things, where did I say the word, that? wait a minute, you're, you're, where you're, did I say you're, that George? George? You don't listen. Wait, 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 wait. But what you do listen, is you listen to the devil in your ear, who agitates you, to attack other Christians rather than do a good work here and defend the gospel against non-Christians, against the enemies of the faith. Instead, you waste your time attacking your brothers and sisters. So if this person, no attack it, George. Say God forbid, oh, not God forbid, say this person is a non-Christian. So I try to defend Christianity. This person is a Protestant or whatever. She tries to defend Christianity. What happens? How is this person going to think of Christians if me and this person contradict each other? Because the problem in your mindset, George, the problem, the problem with all sectarianists like yourself, the problem with all factionalists like yourself is that you want to emphasize everything that is different. Whereas we are called in scripture, in the apostolic writings, to work for the unity of the brotherhood. We're called in scripture, in the apostolic writings, to work for unity. Working for unity means it takes effort. Which means that you emphasize those things that unite us, George. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not those things that divide us, George. Oh, that's right, that's right. George. So how about, how about how about you start defending the gospel with yeah. your Protestant sister yeah. and your Roman Catholic brother that's right. rather than heckling an ecumenical <laughs> Christian and slandering your Latin brothers <laughs> and slandering your Protestant okay. based upon things like whether you eat flatbread or risen bread or whether you 
you believe Joseph was married before his engagement to Mary or not? Okay, and yeah. my last point, and thank you for that. And my last point, my last point is, I brought up some of these examples. I just want more little other example. Please, please let me say. No, no, no. When the, when the what? All right, please, would you allow me just to give me one minute and then we finish, is that good? Right, so thank you, I appreciate it. So another example as well, which you're ridiculing, thinking these are just unimportant things. The Greek word, baptism, where the Roman, before they baptized, immerse the child under the water and out. But the Roman Catholic change it after 1054 and they just sprinkle water on the child. These little things I'm giving you, they're one not minute, important, one minute, please, one minute. Not please, 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 George, they're not important. Know, they're not finish. important, let George. Me your salvation, are you saying? Please let Wait, me finish my saying? point. Are you Sorry. saying, are you contradicting your Lord now? No. You're contradicting no. your Lord now? No. Yes, because when the thief was on the cross yeah. to the other side of Jesus and he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He did. What did your Lord say? Yeah, that's that. What did he say, George? What did he say? No, 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 we've been saying he's mocking wow. his Lord. Today you he's are mo with me. Thank you. Ooh. Was that thief? I oh, know. Was what that thief baptized, George? Patrimony. George, he's a, he's a, he's a, George, George was that thief baptized? No. Was ah. Jesus lying? No. So does baptism guarantee your salvation? Just because of or your acceptance as the Messiah. So why did Jesus then <laughs> answer the question? I answer my question, answer my question I'm not I'm with another question. I'm answering the question. Okay, answer the question. My question, my answer is by way of question. Just like, please, uh, uh, right, you're going to let me answer, answer the question, yeah, George. Answer, Just like Jesus, at the time, he'd answer a question with a question to make the other person think I'm giving. You, it's a fair point. Well, I'm giving you another one. So <laughs> okay. why did Jesus, did John the Baptist yes, George, baptize Jesus, baptize Jesus if yeah. that wasn't important? What do you think Jesus was being baptized to be saved? No, he Thank wasn't. Thank you. He wasn't. No. Yeah. Jesus was not baptized to be saved. He was baptized for those who were going to be saved. Exactly. So, but they, but they done it. G G um, uh, John done it because an example. Please let me finish. Oh, George, so you won't let me finish speaking. George, this George, is a trick you're doing. George, George sprinkling water on the head no. or sub immersing a child, neither of which it does. It's not crucial okay. which way you do baptism. Okay. And this is the very point I want to say. You see, we are in disagreement here. So where do we so go to? We, where important. do we go? Where do we go to find the truth? Yeah, so I'm scripture. using these kind of examples that creep into the church, and then it will cause issues after. So my point is, I don't agree with this gentleman that we can be can be fully embrace uh, anything which is non-holy Catholic and apostolic. Eastern Orthodox Church because it's like you're putting one bad bat one bad Holy apple one Holy Church Catholic Apostolic Church thank you yeah. it's like Eastern Orthodox one it's it like you put what, 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 what happens what happens when you put one bad apple amongst all the good apples all the good apples end up bad that's why the church is always been who's the bad apples George now can we cut the bad apples no wait 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 you referred to the bad apples who are you accusing of being the bad apples those that have that have misinterpreted the Bible like and you, start like you, like and you. start like you. introducing like you, 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 like you just no, did today in the park. No, no. so we, we agree to disagree, that's fine. But I'm not an evil, I'm not the devil. I love you. Let's I love you too, but and you need to stop listening to the devil, bro. You do need to stop listening to the devil, white devil. Start, we'll defend take it up on our start defending the church. Yeah. Stop attacking the church. I your do defend Christian. the church, yeah. and I did defend the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church today. Thank you. Thank you, Jordi. Alright, wrap, wrap up. Yeah, let's get Ralph after I've talked to Ralph.